Hello everybody, this is Dr. Shrutika Kankriya from Asian Eye Hospital Pune. I am a retina specialist and director at Asian Eye Hospital Pune and I would like to discuss a very important topic with you all today which is age-related macular degeneration, the wet type. If you or anybody in your family has this problem or is more than age of 60, please do watch this video till the end. I thought the best way to explain this disease was through my experience with a very distant aunt of mine. She started developing blurring in vision where she found recognizing people's faces difficult. She was extremely un uncomfortable while reading or writing. She said the letters seemed to be jumping on each other. Things started looking distorted and the straight doors started looking curved to her. Besides this, she also complained of seeing a constant black gray spot in her visual field, which would move when she moved her eyes. This is retina. The back portion of the eye is called retina. Retina is a very delicate organ and the central portion is called macula. And the retina comes together to form this optic nerve, which takes the information from the eye to the brain. And this is where this problem of age-related macular degeneration happens in the center of the retina. And what you see here is the picture of the retina. This is the normal retina where everything looks clean and clear. Whereas this is the fundus picture or retinal picture of my aunt who was suffering from the symptoms I just mentioned. And you see there is a central spot which looks blurry. There is some bleeding there. There's some swelling there. So this is the age-related macular degeneration. Next, we thought we should do an OCT scan of the retina to understand the disease in detail. So this is how the normal OCT scan looks, where the 10 layers of retina are depicted very clearly. There's a smooth contour of the retina with this foveal dip that is dip at the center of the retina. Whereas this is the OCT scan of my aunt, which showed irregular swelling at the center of the retina, that is at phobia. You see there is fluid accumulation, there is uh, thickening, there is abnormal levels and the smooth contour is lost. So this is how the scan in patients with wet age-related macular degeneration appears. So the diagnosis of wet age-related macular degeneration was confirmed. When I announced the diagnosis to my aunt, her question was, will I regain my vision back? What is the treatment of this disease? What do we need to get the smooth foveal contour back? Well, I will answer these questions one by one. Will I regain my vision back? Yes, to some extent the vision can be restored, but even after treatment of this disease, the vision cannot go back to the original HD quality. Will that black spot in front of my vision go away? That's very irritating. Well, the black spot will fade away gradually with time and treatment, but it may not go away completely and there will be slight blurriness which will persist even after treatment. Of course, the next question was, how do we treat this disease? Well, say 20 years back, we didn't have any definite treatment for this disease and people would end up going partially blind. But fortunately, for the last 20 years, we have a very revolutionary, innovative treatment for this disease, which is in the form of intravitreal injections. I have a separate video which on this topic and you could refer to the link below for the same or you could search on YouTube where I have in detail discussed the treatment of intravitreal anti of injection. The next question was how much vision will I get back after the injection? Yes, there are certain factors which will prognosticate the disease like size of the abnormal blood vessel complex when we start treating the problem. If that complex is small, compact, then you will regain more vision. If the size of that complex is big and very aggressive, then the vision outcome will be little less. If we pick up the disease in the early stage when it's small and not very aggressive, the treatment outcome is better. The later we pick up the disease and start treating, the outcome becomes worse and worse. Another very important factor is that the injections which we give inside the eyes need to be repeated every four weeks, at least for the initial few months. If somebody misses the injection, some patient gets misguided, misleaded and miss the injections. In that case, again, that abnormal blood vessel complex increases in size, making 
it a worse outcome disease. Now, another very common question which most of the patients with this disease have is, will I get blind because of this disease? Well, the answer is big no. This disease is not a blinding disease. As you see, the disease is restricted to the central retina. So the side retina or the peripheral retina always remains healthy and which always helps you to see vision. The ambulatory vision is always intact. Yes, what gets affected is the reading writing vision and the central fine vision. But you will always be in a position to do your daily routine task by yourself and it is not at all a blinding disease. Even after all this explanation, she was very reluctant to take injection into her eyes because the very fact of getting your eyes pricked by needle was very terrifying for her. Her next question was, what will happen if I don't take the injection? I told her that if you don't take the injection, the abnormal blood complex will become bigger and bigger and it will leave behind a very big scar which will lead to a big black spot in her vision field but it won't make you blind. After listening to this, she was like, okay, I have my other eye which has good vision and uh, she decided not to go for injection in the affected eye. The other eye also had some amount of dry age-related macular degeneration. Now, what is dry age-related macular degeneration? As you see in her retina picture, there are these yellowish spots you can see in the center of the retina at macula and this is how a dry AMD looks. Dry AMD can always get converted into wet AMD and that's when the vision suddenly drops. In her case, the left eye vision was just 30% but right eye vision was almost 95% which made her pretty comfortable and she opted for not taking injection in the affected eye. No matter how much ever I told her that it's going to be safe, it's going to be painless, but she was reluctant to take injection in the affected eye. So upon this, I also warned her that her right eye may develop a similar problem in the future and she has to be very alert about her vision in the right eye because a dry AMD can always get converted into the wet AMD. So anybody who has wet AMD in one eye has increased risk of developing the same wet AMD in the other eye as well. So we give ARIDS2 formulation antioxidant oral therapy to prevent development of wet AMD or to delay the progression of existing age-related macular degeneration that is AMD. Days passed by and the same aunt came to me with similar complaints in the right eye after two years. This time she was terrified because the eye which was left untreated had almost gone partially blind where the vision was just 10% and the newly affected eye had 60% vision. Now this time after evaluation when we told her she has the same problem and she really needs to take injections, she had no other choice but to go ahead with the injection. This injection is given inside the operation theater under extreme sterile precautions. Considering her anxiety, we played relaxing music for her in the operation theater and injection per se takes just 30 seconds. Injection was done, we patched her eyes, she got out of the OT and the very first thing she said was Shrutika. This procedure was so simple. She regretted not taking it in the left eye because when the other eye faces the same problem, that's where you get hint of what would it be like to get partially blind. Next day, she was absolutely fine. Then we did a follow-up OCT scan after three weeks. And here, as you see, this was her swelling in the right eye at presentation. And after injection, this is how it came down. Yes, but this is not the end. I told her we have to take two more injections four weeks apart. And then we also take more injections as and when they are required. She religiously came after four weeks. We gave the second injection. Again, after four weeks, we gave the third injection and the vision was gradually improving. The swelling was regressing gradually. Now she had regained vision to almost 80% in the right eye and left eye was the same 10%. But at least she was able to read big font because we caught up the disease early, we treated the disease aggressively. Now I've been following up with her for the past four years. Her vision in the right eye, which we treated in time is almost 85% and the left eye is still 10% as once the disease dries out, no matter how many injections we give, it will not regain. The thing we need to remember here is the disease has to be caught in time, treated aggressively in time, without any gaps, without any lactam. Once that blood vessel complex dries out, we cannot do 
anything for the disease which happened in her left eye. Another very relevant question asked by patient is, how many injections do I need to take? Do I need to take this injection lifetime? Will this ever stop? Do I need to come to you again and again? Well, the first year, the disease is demanding, where we need to give at least injections five to eight times. The subsequent years, the frequency of injection reduces. Depends upon how aggressively you have treated the disease in the initial phase, the number of injections will vary. So the strategy I follow is treat the disease initially very aggressively so that it doesn't recur in the subsequent years. So the very important fact is to show up to the doctor, do your scans and whenever advised, take the injection. While I was in Miami, Pascom Pharma Eye Hospital, where this injection was innovated by Dr. Rosenfeld, I had an opportunity to work with him. I have seen patients coming every month for years together and there are some patients who have taken injections almost 30 to 40 times. The disease is much more common in the Caucasian population, that is the Western population. And there the injection is given in the OPD setup because there are not much sterile issues there in OPD itself because it is so common that they cannot afford to give this injection in the OT also. This is the OPT process, so it's like a, any routine procedure. So it's a very common treatment abroad, now getting more and more common in India as well, because the disease is getting more common here. Just like my aunt, I have come across many patients who don't opt for injections in time, who delay the injection time and land up in partially blind vision and almost land into depression in this delicate old age. My heart sinks when I see a patient who has lost vision because of wet AMD, because this disease is easily treatable, provided you don't have a casual attitude towards it, provided you're alert enough to pick up the symptoms of blurring of vision, distorted vision in time, land up in a retina clinic, take the injections in time. So the most important message I want to give today is do not take your vision symptoms lightly or casually. Even at the slightest hint of blurring of vision or distortion in vision or discomfort while reading or writing or inability to recognize faces which used to easily recognize earlier, all these symptoms need to be taken very seriously and one needs to be very alert about this. Land up in a retina clinic as soon as possible once you start seeing this. Because I've heard many patients saying, we didn't even realize when the vision got so bad. The disease can progress as fast as within 15 days and can make you debilitated as far as reading, writing is concerned, which is so important at old age.